Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the November 18th, 2019 meeting of the San Carlos Planning Commission to order. We begin every meeting of the Planning Commission with a pledge allegiance to our great flag and country. I invite everyone to join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you and welcome everyone. Can we please have the commissioner roll call? Commissioner Garvey? Here. Commissioner Bradley? Here. Vice Chair Iacopone? Here. And for the record, Commissioner David Roof um, will be absent this evening. Chair Dugan? Here. We will now open up the floor for general public comment. Public comment is limited to items not on tonight's agenda. The commission may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed during public comment. However, our general policy is to refer such items to staff for further attention or to have a matter placed on a future agenda for public hearing. Do we have any public comment this evening? Seeing none, we will move on to the approval of three sets of minutes. Uh, this will be uh, minutes of our meeting from September 3rd, October 21st, and October 23rd. Commissioners, did we have any thoughts or comments on our previous minutes? Uh, Chair, uh, Chair uh, Jugan, um, staff would just like to note for the record that we identified a couple of incorrect spellings for Commissioner Iacopone's name. I believe this was primarily on the October 23rd minutes, um, so we'd make, like to make that friendly uh, correction. I, well. I uh, motion that we approve the minutes. A second. All in favor of approving all three sets of minutes, say aye. 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 I heard no nays. Uh, the minutes are so approved. Thank you. We will now enter the public hearing section of the meeting. Uh, we have two matters before us this evening. For each matter, our planning staff will review the project and give us their recommendation. Then we'll hear briefly from the applicant if they would like to present. Then we'll open up for public comment. Finally, we'll deliberate as a commission and make a decision. It's important to note that if you go to court to challenge an item on tonight's agenda, you may be limited to only those issues you or someone else raised in the public hearing tonight or otherwise brought to our attention in a writing delivered to the city before this meeting started. If you would like to speak this evening, please fill out a speaker form found on the table in the far corner and hand it in to us. All speakers must come forward to the microphone for the benefit of everyone who may view the recording of tonight's proceedings. The first item under our public hearing tonight is a new sign at 145 Shoreway Road. Uh, staff? Thank you, good evening, Chair and Commissioners. Tonight I'll be presenting an application for design review approval of three wall signs and alterations to an existing pole sign at the public storage facility located at 145 Shoreway Road. As you may know, the Planning Commission is assigned um, authority to review all signage that is visible from the 101 for design review. And the existing use of the site is a self-storage establishment operated by public storage. The site features multiple storage unit buildings, an on-site rental office, and on-site parking. The applicant, Adar Incorporated, is requesting design review approval of three wall signs and alterations to an existing pole sign. The applicant also proposes to install one directional sign located next to the entry driveway. The table above shows the attributes of each proposed sign. The proposed alterations to the existing pole sign consist of a new flex face, 
uh, installed on a retrofitted sign cabinet in addition to repair and repainting of the structure. Both the pole sign and the primary wall sign will be internally illuminated. The other signage is not proposed to be illuminated. The image shown on the left is a rendering of the alterations to the existing pole sign and the image on the right is a rendering of the primary wall sign installed on the building. The elevation uh, view on the left side is, a, um, is of the rental office signs to be installed on the building and the image on the right depicts the directional sign located to the front entry driveway on the site. The proposed signage complies with the maximum allowed number and size of signage as provided in the sign ordinance for individual tenant occupancies. The applicant is proposing a total of five signs, which is the maximum allowed. Moreover, the sign ordinance states that pole signs are only measured on one side and that directional signs under four, feet in, four square feet in area and under six feet in height are not counted against the total allowed area for on-site signage. The Planning Commission must make the findings listed above here on the slide to grant design review approval. Based on the reasons provided in the staff report, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve or grants this request for design review approval. All public noticing requirements have been fulfilled and the department did not receive any comments. On the screen is the text of a motion to be used should the commission decide to grant the design review approval. Planning staff is available to address any questions and Wendy Sabine of AdArt Incorporated is available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Terrific, thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions of staff? Uh, I had one question. Can you help me understand what is a flex face? I, I, I heard you say it, it's also in the packet. I, yeah. What is that? My understanding is that a flex face is a sort of laminated material that they wrap around the cabinet and that's just referring to the um, the material that they surround the cabinet with. And Thank you. Okay. It Hold kind on. of leads into the name flex, like flexible. Yeah, I think. And one quick follow up. Is there any guidelines on the height of the pole? I, I drove by the property this weekend. I saw the height of the pole, mm -hmm. but I didn't see in the packet that the height would be changed at all or that there was even any guidelines as to the height. Yes, the maximum, um, so pole signs are limited to only certain areas in the city. Um, Shoreway Road is one of those areas, and the maximum height of new pole signs is 40 feet. Um, however, the applicant is not proposing to change the height of the existing pole structure. Thank you. I got just a bit confused on this uh, chart outlining the size of the signage. So we have a maximum allowable area of 100. Their display area is 143 and there's, what is meant by area not counted and what, what is that exactly? Yes, let me find the, the page. 25, you said? Thank you. So there are certain provisions in the sign ordinance um, that allow for deductions of signage towards um, the maximum allowed on-site area. Uh, for example, sign PS refers to the um, pole sign and the, the, the sign ordinance states that sign or pole signs are only measured one side if they are multi-sided. Hmm. So this was discounted towards the maximum, or the, the area counted, I should say, towards the, the maximum on-site area. Um, and, and a small correction on the table as well, sign D is a double-sided sign. Um, each side is four square feet. However, I forgot to input that the total sign area is actually eight feet. But, and the other provision of the sign ordinance is that um, directional signs that are under four square feet in area are actually deducted completely from the um, on-site signage, so they don't count towards an applicant's signage. I see, so we're encouraging directional signage, which seems rational, but uh, any idea why we encourage pole signage? Those seem particularly impactful. I just wonder why we encourage those like that. Yeah, from my understanding, um, it's limited to a particular area, 
Um, and I don't know, um, we don't have a map of that area, but maybe you can correct me, Kevin, but it's just in this particular one area of the city. Yes. And I, I'm not sure about the history. It could have been something that's grandfathered in. They're not allowed, you know, everywhere. No. Do you have any history on that, Lisa? Um, yeah, pole signs were generally permitted in San Carlos, and then when the sign ordinance was updated, um, 1999, I believe, um, there was a decision to discourage them, and there was actually a provision that had a um, large size freeway oriented sign with a conditional use permit from the Planning Commission. When that was modified, then I believe kind of the compromise was to come down and do the one side counting, but still requiring Planning Commission review. So I think we've taken steps to reduce the amount of signage um, kind of incrementally over time. I see, so even though it reads like an incentive today, this was actually a downsize into what was previously permitted? That's correct. Okay. Hmm. Kevin, can you just say again, the, the area counted column is 98.9, .9, correct? That is correct, yes. The only um, change is to road for sign D, which should read eight um, in each column display area and column area not counted. The the area counted for sign D does not change. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Would the applicant like to say anything or does anyone have questions of the applicant? Yeah, um, I'd, if uh, you wouldn't mind, could you come on up the mic? I just uh, a, a question or two about the, uh, um, at nighttime, um, the lumens on this, uh, I'm sure they comply with uh, city requirements. Is there is there a possibility to um, change the timing so that either the lights dim or they go off, let's say from midnight to dawn? That's a good question. Um, on, and. Within each area or with any city that we are doing this um, for public storage, we obviously will have to comply. There is a, what's called a torque timer. So there is a timer that is attached to these things that um, it actually is a photo cell timer. And yes, they can be adjusted to go on and off at certain times. So whatever, if any ordinance that says if it's gotta be off on this time or it has to be, you know, it's gotta go off now and it can go on now, then that's what will happen. Okay, good, thank you. Sure. Anything else? I have one question. In order to illuminate the sign, are you, are you running power then to the pole? There's already existing power There's to exi the pole. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. I think that's it, thank okay. you. Uh, I would entertain a motion on this item, commissioners. I'll um, move the oh, planning. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Um, you know, one of the things that we've talked about as a planning commission regularly is, um, I'll call it light pollution and trying to uh, think about the brightness of signs on the highway. And for my part, um, I would be interested in making a condition of approval, um, shutting off the sign uh, let's say after midnight, and uh, just keeping less light on the highway. Good. I like that idea. I guess I would just um, ask staff, is that um, off our reservation as far as uh, our purview here? Uh, through the chair, the code does allow uh, the commissioners to um, ascertain certain parameters within reason as to the time, place, and manner um, on, on the displays, including illumination. So if there's a certain time by which uh, the commission wishes to condition um, as a um, part of the approval process by which the illumination must be turned off, you certainly do have the discretion to do that. I'm not necessarily opposed to the concept of it. I'm just afraid of, uh, um, you know, what standard have we held other applicants to and what's the history on it or are we promulgating new policy here? Yes, through the chair. Um, I think it, I can't remember the exact year. It was before my time, maybe perhaps in 20, 
11. Um, at any rate, the issue has to do with the in and out um, fast food uh, restaurant that's located on the corner of Holly and Industrial. Um, that is one particular um, application whereby the, uh, the approval process included a condition of approval that the lights needed to be turned off when the business was not in operation. So um, in and out, I don't know what their current hours are, but usually I think they, maybe it's one, one o'clock or at some time after midnight, but whenever they are closed, the light is required to be turned off. So that's one particular case that we can share with you where such a condition um, was part of the approval process. So then I'll move that the Planning Commission approve the design review application for three wall signs and alterations to an existing pole sign at 145 Shoreway Road uh, subject to the uh, lighted signage being turned off when uh, the business is not open. I would be more comfortable, frankly, if it was a set time like midnight. I mean, self-storage in particular, they have office hours and they have hours that people can access the building. Um, but uh, commissioners, any other thoughts on this? I like the idea of a set time. I, I, I think people can go to storage units maybe 24 seven. Uh, so if we had it turned off from midnight to four, something in the night, a set time, would that be better? And through the chair or through the, um, to the maker of the motion, Commissioner Bradley, um, I think as we, as the commission continues to discuss this potential condition, staff would ask that the commission clarify which signs to be turned off, because certainly um, there's the wall sign um, that I believe is also illuminated as well as the pole sign. I mean, my understanding is maybe perhaps you're talking about the pole sign, but it would be helpful to clarify uh, what signage um, this would apply to. Yeah, thank you. My, I mean, my uh, specific point was the pole sign visible from the road. I mean, I'm sure that there's lighting around the buildings that would make sense um, if you're driving up and you kind of know where you're going. The, the lighted building sign is probably good to uh, for people to see it. So uh, I'm perceiving that this wouldn't interfere with existing customers uh, using the facility, finding it when they're close, and I'm just again, mindful of trying to keep light off the highway um, at night. And, you know, it could be midnight, uh, it could be one o'clock, consistent with uh, in and out Burger. Uh, Chair, if you're concerned about consistency, you know, maybe we could, um, uh, again, it's provided that in and out is still closed. <laughs> Yeah, I could support a specific time. Um, you know, it feels um, uh, like perhaps it should be studied more if we feel strongly about this as far as what time to set. And through the chair, we just looked up in and out um, operating hours and they close at 1 a.m. So Friday upon closing. Friday and Saturdays is 1.30. And Friday and Saturdays is 1.30. Okay. <laughs> So right now we, we have a motion, but it has not been seconded, which means we don't have to deal with the motion on the table. Um, if a commissioner would like to make another motion at this time, uh, conditioning approval on signage visible to the freeway has to be turned off at 1 a.m. Um, I think I sense a um, consensus on that. Yeah, well then I will move that the Planning Commission approve the design review application for three wall signs and alterations to an existing pole sign at 145 Shoreway Road with a condition that the pole sign uh, is shut off uh, from one o'clock in the morning. I'll second it. Very well. Uh, can we have a roll call on the sign please? 
Commissioner Garvey? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Vice Chair Iacopone? Yes. And Chair Dugan? Yes. Uh, very good, the motion is passed and uh, the signage is approved. Well, thank you. Don. If uh, I'm presuming that the um, the owner w wouldn't want it on during the day, so I'm just presuming, therefore, that when it's off, it's off, and then it comes back on the next evening at whatever time the light sensor turns it on. Yeah, that, that's certainly consistent with the intent that we uh, demonstrated with our motion here. Yes. 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 Is, are we okay? Do we, is that clear enough or do we need to put anything more for the record? Should we uh, introduce a second motion on when it should turn back off or are we good at this point? I'm comfortable our intent was established here. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, we'll move on to the second agenda item of the public hearing, which are additional signs freeway oriented at 171 Industrial Road. Uh, staff, do we have a report on this item? Thank you. Um, just a bit of background. The um, existing billboard that you'd see if you drove by today um, will be removed within three years as required under a relocation agreement for a new electronic billboard that was approved at 815 American Street. Um, there was a sign that was affixed to that billboard um, that was operated by the um, former business owner there, Eurotech Business, and that was attached to that billboard that's going to be removed. So in August of 2019, the Planning Commission granted a variance and design review to allow a new freeway-oriented pole sign at 171 Industrial. And that's essentially what you see here in this graphic is the sign that was approved uh, August of 2019. It's a 30-foot tall pole sign. The display area is 10 by 16. Um, it's also a decorative cover and it's externally illuminated. Um, recently, Lyft has taken over this location and they're operating a collision center at 171 Industrial. Um, they have made modifications to that former um, Mercedes Service Center sign, as you see here. Uh, the changes to the pole sign include painting the dark, um, the base a dark gray from the blue color, painting the sign face white with bright pink Lyft lettering, and the signs of the cabinet are also painted bright pink. As I indicated, the sign is externally illuminated, um, and as it's now white, the illumination appears quite bright at night. So staff was able to view it a few times in the evening and is concerned about how bright it is. Um, so we've added a condition of approval requ requiring the lighting level be reduced to the satisfaction of the community development director. The applicant is also proposing to install a new 15.69 square foot wall sign that will be internally illuminated with individual channel letters on the south facing building elevation, as well as replace um, the signage for the existing pole sign that's located along Industrial Road. And that would advertise the lift collision center. No other modifications to the pole, just really re replacing that cabinet area, but it's the same height, same location, same size. I mean, this signage was all um, approved at this business when it was actually in the county of San Mateo prior to its incorporation into the city limits. Is that sign we just saw there lighted as well? Um, I'd have to ask the applicant to respond to that. I'm not sure that it currently is illuminated. Um, okay. The applicant is here this evening. Okay, when we get to it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and staff feels the findings can be met for planning commission to grant the design review for the signage um, with that condition I mentioned on the lighting. Uh, the, the public outreach was completed with the mailing and posting of the notice in the newspaper. Um, I did speak with the adjacent property owner that just had questions about the application, but did not express any concern. And here's the motion, if you're prepared to make it this evening, I'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions. And as I indicated, the applicant, uh, Lily Lim, is here this evening to answer any questions as well. Thank you. 
Uh, terrific, thank you, staff. And I appreciate that the uh, amount of illumination was studied on this prior to it reaching us, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, commissioners, any question of staff? Maybe just a, a clarification. I saw in the findings they were different from the prior sign set of findings that we needed to look at. Uh, and again, particularly about um, the latitude with regard to um, ending nighttime illumination. Is that? Uh, that would uh, also apply here. It yes. would apply here. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you. I read also in your re staff report that uh, construction had already gone on. That's correct. How does that happen? Uh, well, the sign, the um, Mercedes auto repair sign was fully permitted, was built with a permit. Sometime after that, when Lyft moved in, they painted and modified the sign and they did not realize they needed to get planning commission approval to do so. So when they submitted their sign application, we informed them that that sign also needs planning commission approval and they amended their application to include it. Thank you. Uh, is there a similar study on what's allowable by way of signage given the frontage of this? Right, so this would also be 100 square feet and it's a little unique in that a variance was granted for that pole sign that faces um, Highway 101, and it's quite large. Um, it's 160 square feet, so that by itself exceeds it. So I've analyzed it based on um, the other signage, and it comes to 96.19 square feet. So without the um, pole sign that was granted with a variance, the signage does comply. So these are new, so are all the signs, which signs are the new signs? Sure, the only net new sign is that wall sign. Okay. The others are replacing existing. Okay. With the same size. And you're saying we're in compliance because we're ignoring the 160 foot sign and the other signs add up to less than 100 feet? Correct, because that sign was approved through a variance. And as opposed to just a simple design review. And so we're not, Variance runs with the land, yeah. It runs, that's okay, that was my question. Uh, applicant, anything you'd like to say about this? Can you approach the mic though? I do wanna understand uh, the illumination on the, I guess, um, industrial road facing uh, pole sign. Um, good evening, Commission. My name's Lily Lim. I'm the um, applicant uh, representing Lyft tonight, and thank you for reviewing the application. Um, so the question to the sign on Industrial Road, um, it's if it's not currently illuminated, we're just changing out the face. We're not adding anything new. Um, so if it's not currently illuminated, then it won't be. Okay. We're keeping everything as is just swapping out this, the old signage for the new sign. Got it, but I'm sorry, you, you're you not sure this evening whether it is illuminated or not? Um, my understanding is that it's not illuminated. Okay. Um, so. I, I do not believe it is illuminated, but I was hoping the applicant could confirm. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And which signage was painted without prior approval? The one under the billboard that's along the freeway, a sign B on the site plan. Okay. That's the first sheet of the plans. The big one. Um, it, this may be a marketing question, but on the main sign that faces the 101, mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing um, on there about it being a collision center, whereas in the other, in the other sign, uh, it says San Carlos Collision Center. Mm -hmm. I mean, just can, is there any thought process you can share? Why not to call that out? Um, I think it's just to keep, just to be in keeping with our branding. Um, the white background with the pink lettering is um, consistent throughout our company. And then once you approach the sign, uh, once you approach industrial, then you know that it's, that's where it is. 
but it's the, our only collision center in the peninsula. And through the chair, if I may, I just uh, wanted to remind the commission that discretion is limited to the non-communicative aspect to signage. And um, uh, the commission is not authorized to uh, be able to exercise discretion as to the graphic or the message content of any signage. Um, do you have in your color palette uh, something that's cream rather than bright white? Um, again, that's also part of our branding. Um, so, no. <laughs> Not at this moment. Terrific, any other questions of the applicant or staff? Uh, Yes, the Eurotech Mercedes garage going in, is that the same people that had operated there until last year? Do you know? It's the same name anyway, but I think it's a different building. We're replacing that sign with our sign. Sorry, I don't think I'm understanding your question. Well, there was, there was a garage service center called Eurotech Correct. that worked on Mercedes mm -hmm. until about a year ago. Right. And so this sign now going up, are these the same people only in a different building? Um, we, Lyft has taken over the Eurotech space. And so Eurotech has vacated the site and we will, we have been operating our collision center from the, the previous Eurotech space. So Eurotech, uh, to my knowledge is no longer an operation, not at this location at least. Okay. Okay. Um, I would imagine we're going to contemplate a 1 a.m. turn off for your uh, poll sign as well. Um, do you have any reaction or comment to that? Um, so just kind of as a background, um, the landlord had orchestrated the refacing of the sign and so um, we will have to check with their sign vendor to see um, how that would work logistically. Well, I mean, the, the technology is there. My, my question was more on business impact, et cetera. Um, I think uh, as I think if it's 1 a.m like the previous sign and existing signage that has a time limitation, um, I think we would be amenable to that. Okay, terrific, thank you. Uh, nothing else for me. Um, I think we should be clear though, um, I, well, is are we contemplating as, as a commission a, uh, a time limit on this sign and how do we wanna phrase that? I would, I would have proposed the same language uh, on the amendment as for the, the prior approval. I'd agree with that. And then um, it's off until the next evening. Is that how we want to call the end of that? Yeah, we can make that clear. Okay. Uh, Steph, could you direct me to where the, um, I saw it earlier, but I'm flipping around here. Um, the 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 illumination condition that that you've requested so on the design review certificate um we have it as item three so that's packet page 52 the illumination directed on the sign cabinet on the pole sign along us 101 shall be reduced in brightness to the satisfaction of the community development director okay Yeah, I like that as a delegation of authority. And then um, what do we think the standard will be used for that, how it relates to the lighting of other signage along 101? How the, in the future you're saying or? No, um, so it's to the satisfaction of the director, but what do we think he's gonna be satisfied by, that the sign is no brighter than other signs along the freeway? Or? We're trying to use the same standard we had applied to the um, LED billboards that okay. were installed. Um, and so I think we're gonna to try to gauge it based on those because those were using um, Caltran standards yeah. um, of illumination or recommendations at least. 
Yeah, that's interesting because those things are bright. Um, is that an objective standard, lumens or something, or is it just uh, subjective? It is objective. Okay. Um, but rather than have that measurement take place, um, we felt it would be, uh, we had established a more subjective measurement. Got it. Well, so it's a subjective um, condition, but he will likely be leaning on something objective to reach it. So Yeah, based like, on kind yeah. of a field vision of those other signs that are existing, correct? Okay, good. That's fair. Um, I have a question. If we're already um, reducing the brightness of the sign, is it possible to not add the condition to um, turn off the lights at, after a certain time if we're already dimming them to a certain degree? Um, through the chair, if I could just make another point. Sure. Um, when we had some experience recently with these LED billboards and they indicated that they have very little white space on the billboards and so I think that's something unique about this sign is yeah. the amount of white space and how bright that is in the evenings. Um, so those billboards in, all indicated that they have very little white space and that they continue to dim. They have those electronic dimmers that can adjust according to the um, ambient light and I think this one um, we're not satisfied at this point with the technology that would be applied here. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be more of a timer base and not a dimmer based. Um, and so it's through the through the chair, of course, about and the commission about the timing. But that would be staff's concern is just the the, the brightness of the white. Understood. Um, your concerns noted. I think we'll take it up when we discuss this as a commission. Thank you. Um, Trevik, do we have any uh, public comment on this matter? Any speaker cards in? No speaker oh. cards this evening. Okay. For this item. All right. Um, so uh, um, I'll entertain a motion to close a public debate or public hearing. So moved. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so public hearing is closed on this matter. Uh, commissioners, it sounds like uh, we're amenable to approving this subject to the lighting condition. And I, I, my take on it is the lighting condition is um, just to bring it into um, the standard that's being applied to all other signage. So I don't think that that would be cause to uh, reach a different conclusion as to when it turns off. Yeah, yeah, for my part, I would agree. I think, um, yeah, you, you said it right. Thank you. Anything else we want to discuss on this matter? Are you still going to leave the uh, nose of the car on the corner of the building? <laughs> it's a landmark. Yeah. It's certainly uh, <laughs> suggestive of a collision center. Okay, if there's no further discussion, I would entertain a motion on this item, which would include the, uh, the times that we discussed. Well, um, again, I will move that the Planning Commission approve the request for design review for the signage at 171 Industrial Road based on the findings list in the staff report and subject to the conditions contained in the design review certificate with the condition that the uh, signage, the lighting on the highway facing sign on 101 be uh, shut off from one o'clock in the morning until it's turned back on uh, at the normal time the next day. Just a clarification, would that be at dusk during the evening hours? Uh, yes, at dusk uh, when the photo cell would naturally turn it on. Um. I, I guess I'm not sure how to do this procedurally, but I would like that to apply to all pole signs, not just the freeway one. I realize we believe the other one's not lit, but I think this is a standard we're trying to set for all pole signs. Um, I think that's reasonable. They could add electricity, excuse me, electricity yeah. later, even if it's not lit today, um, and without the benefit of planning commission review. Yeah. Okay. Is that motion clear enough? 
It hasn't been seconded. Why don't we restate that? I move that the Planning Commission approve the request for design review for the signage at 171 Industrial Road based on the findings list in the staff report and subject to the conditions contained in the design review certificate with two conditions. The first is that the lighted sign uh, facing the 101. All pull signs, all pull signs. Okay, uh, that all pole signs, whether they are illuminated today or will be illuminated in the future, are subject to shutting them off at uh, one in the morning. And uh, they will turn back on naturally with a photo cell at dusk the following day. Perfect, I'll second that. Commissioner Garvey? Yes. Commissioner Iacoponi? Yes. Vice Chair Bradley? Yes. And Chair Dugan? Yes. Correction, I'm not the vice chair and any longer. And I just longer. realized that. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Thank you for the promotion. <laughs> you're such a great stand-in. <laughs> uh, terrific. Uh, so your, your signage is approved. Um, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Terrific. Well, that was the final item in our public hearing. So we can move on to reports, correspondence, and general information. Do we have a report on recent city council actions? And there's none this evening. Okay. Uh, I believe we do have a planning commission comment. Yes, I have uh, one, one comment. I attended a welcome home meeting earlier this month for the city of San Carlos with the, the group Home for All that was uh, facilitating. This was a really well attended community meeting and we talked about housing opportunities and housing options for San Carlos, uh, including affordable housing. It was a really robust discussion and I'm really glad I attended. Terrific, and I think that is scheduled to be repeated in February, is that correct? That's correct, I believe oh. um, on the, the next meeting will actually be on a Saturday and I believe it's February 1st. Very good. I am planning to attend that one, but I was regretted I waited. Now I have to go on Saturday to it, but uh, such as it is. Oh, very good. <laughs> Terrific. Any other planning commission comments or reports? Uh, one thing is uh, you, John, and I attended the uh, Elements 21 transportation meeting on October 30th, I believe it was, just recently, in San, San Mateo City Library. That's a series of uh, ones uh, for planning commission members. There'll probably be another one come along after the holidays. This was my first training event. It, it was great. I enjoyed it and it was well done. Yeah, terrific. San Carlos was well represented with uh, three, three of us there, so it was a good event. Very interesting. Um, there were speakers from both uh, Samtrans and uh, um, Caltrain there, and lots of, uh, they have a lot of initiatives underway, and so that was interesting. Very good. If there's no other comments or reports, uh, do we have any correspondence this evening? Uh, there was nothing received this evening or anything to... Um pass forward to the commission at this time. Okay, terrific, and anything else? Uh, yes, just in closing, uh, just a couple of announcements related to our upcoming meeting. Our next regularly scheduled meeting with the Planning Commission is on December the 2nd. However, we will be sending out a cancellation notice. If you haven't received that already in your email box, you will soon. Uh, there's just no projects that are ready to be presented. So that would leave December 16th as the last meeting um, for the calendar year. And it's possible we could have one item, so it looks like we'll be closing out the year kind of in a little bit more of a quiet manner. But we'll be back on January 21st, and um, January 21st uh, Planning Commission meeting is actually a Tuesday because of the holiday. And um, we're looking uh, to bring back the um, accessory dwelling unit ordinance to the commission for your review. So uh, that's just a brief update um, on what to look for on the calendar. Uh, in advance. Thank you. Terrific, thank you. 
if there's nothing else, uh, I move to adjourn this meeting of the Planning Commission. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. We're adjourned. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> That's actually a requirement. I only recently learned that. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah.